Thank it's, you very much. It's my, my pleasure for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Atul sir, also. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Moving towards uh, second session, Education 4.0. It relates, education is not learning of facts, but the training of mind to think. The quote by Albert Einstein. Industry 4.0 will transform the way jobs and education will be seen. And this will result in the evolution of education 4.0. I take this pitch to welcome our next speaker, Mr. Dilip Patil, founder and CEO, Intel Information Canada, and Mr. Abhinit Patil, co-founder in Intel Information Technology Canada. Sir, we are honored to have you as our speaker for the second session. May I now request both of you to take a charge of the session. Hand over, I hand over the session to Dilip Patil, sir. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, uh, hey, Trupti, uh, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can hear you and the video is pretty clear. Okay, okay. great, 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 great. So, uh, thank you, uh, Trupti being a host and thank you to Dibai Patil uh, for host having us here. It's our honor. Uh, we feel um, welcomed here as well. Um, the community is very involved. Everyone is, you know, participating and it's great to see the initiative that uh, Dibai Patil has taken and the IQAC has also done here to organize this webinar. So um, we also, I, I would also like to thank um, Mr. Uh, Phil Bell for giving an amazing presentation. Uh, I learned something from that as well. Yeah. So we'll definitely, um, it was a great presentation and I hope that everyone else can take some inspiration to move forward um, in their future aspirations. Yeah. Thanks, Philip. Yeah. So uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to give a brief introduction on what we do. So uh, Dilip here, he's my co-founder. Uh, he actually manages Intelli. And I, ma I manage Brainza. Um, essentially, Brainza is a software development company where we work with clients for digital corporate engineering and helping clients achieve essentially what Industry 4.0 aims to do. So automation advantage, um, building products, building the future of essentially processes and how business models can be revolutionized by you know, using emerging technologies. Yeah, basically, uh, in Intel, uh, we do uh, corporate trainings where in... Uh, uh, trainings like uh, e-learning e and uh, corporate trainings, individual trainings. Uh, here, uh, like I want to more uh, focus on like what we do, what different we do. Here in Intelli, we uh, more focus on skills rather than the theory. Theory you can from many sources like books and even Google, right? But uh, even uh, in most of the uh, colleges, they focus on only theory. But uh, the candidates which are coming to us for uh, like uh, taking a skills and en enhancing their skills for the cutting edge uh, technologies. So in uh, Intelli, at Intelli, we are providing that type of uh, you know uh, hands-on and uh, like that type of skills on uh, cutting edge technology. Currently, we are also working on one of the initiative for e-learning uh, due to the COVID-19 um, uh, uh, pandemic, um, Ontario government also decided to go all the schooling like on um, like e-learning schooling. So we are presenting ourselves as a solution a provider, one of the solution provider uh, for about there are uh, about 4.2 million students uh, starting from grade one to grade 12. So how this digital transformation happens and uh, how this uh, like impact of pandemic uh, 19 uh, is there and uh, how the culture will uh, get adapted in the education industry and how we can use that industry 4.0 uh, like a technology cutting edge technologies to uh, provide them a solution yeah so essentially that's what we work on and today's talk is going to be about industry 4.0 and the emerging technologies that will shape how uh, various sectors like manufacturing logistics education you name any sector will be revolutionized by technology so i will just share my screen just give me a second um Trupti, can you confirm if you can see my screen uh yeah Great. It, it's it's uploading just to two minutes. Yes. I'll confirm Let me what two minutes it is. Yeah. Yeah, now it is visible. You Great. can go ahead. All right. Yeah. So today's topic is Industry 4.0. Um, 
in, in simple terms, what I would like to place it at is, is that it's helping organizations achieve automation advantage. So keep that in mind when you, as we go through the presentation, the goal of Industry 4.0 is how can we leverage technologies to better uh, automate processes that are repetitive, that are manual, that are you know slowing our process and better um, automate this and get an advantage out of this. So what I always like to um, think about uh, is the technology adoption rate. So what has happened is over the last 10, 15 years, 20 years, we've seen a rapid increase in technology adoption. So if you look at uh, mobile phones, so when they first started, they had an adoption rate of 12 years. So it took 12 years for mobile phones to get their first 50 million users. And then as you move forward with the internet, and then Facebook came out, which changed how we all communicate, we basically got connected. This world becomes smaller. Um, Facebook took us, what, four years to adopt. Uh, WeChat only took 50, uh, uh, one year for 50 million users. And then the game that revolutionized how we use technology like AR um, was only, it only took 19 days for adoption. So this is a significant, um, I think, a diagram that I always like to use. Um, it just shows that the technology distribution is so rapid and it's so fast that any new thing that comes out, say, today will be out there, adopted by millions of users the next day. By the next day. And so from our research, what we've gathered is that there is uh, nine technological trends. Um, this were also posted by Gartner. So the first trend is hyper automation. So at hyper automation, we are involved with things like using robots, using all these software bots that can help us just put get through processes faster by like 10 times faster, hundreds faster. Then we move on to something called multi-experience. So in multi-experience, it's like, how do we combine the virtual world with the physical world? So um, things like AR, mixed reality, all of these come under multi-experience. Democratization is the access of technology, the access of power within the hands of the general or average uh, citizen. So I, my, my phone today has more power than the computer that powered World War II um, operations. So just try to imagine the amount of power you have in your phone. So essentially that's what the democratize, democratization of technology is working on. It's basically distributing cloud technology, distributing computing power, to the general user so they can actually you know, create solutions and make products that can benefit society. Then you have human augmentation. So things like giving our body um, new abilities. Uh, it could also be like, um, how do we you know, print organs, for example, using 3D printing and all that to create new organs. Then you move on to something called traceability and transparency. A lot of dealing with security. Uh, distributed cloud again goes with democratization. So having access to storage, having access to power, all that goes under that. Then we talk about empowered edge. So things like factories and how factories are being revolutionized, kind of the core of what industry 4.0 is. And then we move on to practical blockchain. So blockchain is another technology which is essentially going to revolutionize the future of finance, the future of how is the data is moving world. And we have all these things. So these big trends that are to shape next, say, 10, 20 years. So today's focus will be around uh, Empowered Edge. So in Empowered Edge, you have IoT, you have Industry 4.0 that falls under this. So in Industry 4.0, you're essentially combining emerging, your uh, connected and smart technologies to digitally transform industry. So an industry is essentially any sector like the medical sector, the manufacturing sector, so the point here is that industry 4.0 is like an overarching um, term given to a set of technologies, a group of um, systems working together, is uh, companies and individuals better innovate, better um, deliver to the problems that we're all facing today. So things that are even coming out from this pandemic today um, that are kind of pushing some industries to go above and beyond. For example, the healthcare industry is going under a rapid change. So because of the COVID-19, the priorities have shifted. Uh, many companies are, you know, chasing to find the vaccine, the next cure, so they can, you know, come across this uh, and solve this issue that we're all facing. So with the healthcare industry, there, there are people working across um, uh, industries. They're also 
working with um, the techno technological sector. For example, there's AI that's coming in, helping you know healthcare companies come up with come up with like vaccines, come up with um, uh, issue. So point here is that three point is an overarching um, term given to a variety of industries that are trying to use technologies to better how their production process goes. So a question we always ask is why does this matter? Uh, the key thing now is that even with this whole boom around technologies, this thing like, oh, AI is coming out, everyone should run after AI. In reality, only 13% of businesses have realized the full potential of digital investments. Which is a very small number, given that if, if you were to increase that number, so say beyond 50, 60, 70%, the pace of innovation would boost out and would tremendously increase. So, it's important to, important to talk to discuss at the moment. And it's something that we uh, in our company are also pioneering with the community around us in Canada and US. Some of our clients were working with them on how they can leverage technology to better their processes. And in the future, it's headed toward the whole hyper personalized experience, uh, products and services where if you have companies across industries working together, you have clients, you know, getting very, very personalized services and this whole new world, which is beyond what we can even imagine at the moment. So where does this term come from? Come from? So the fourth industrial revolution um, is, as you can see, industry 4.0. So essentially the version 4.0 of this industry. So it all began um, industry 1.0, as we know it, began when the steam powered engine came around the early 1800s. So like 1784 is, I think, when they say uh, the first steam powered engine was invented. So when that came out, it revolutionized how we all um, travel, how we move from place to place. It connected areas that were very, very far beyond imagination together. There's people from you know thousands of kilometers connecting because of this new train that was out there. So it, it improved transportation networks, it improved how people communicate, and the world just got bigger for everyone. Then you had this mechanization that came in. So that was called the Industrial Revolution. Then you moved on to industry 2.0, where you had um, you had this whole mechanization, you had the mechanics, but there was a lot of the thing was still manual. It was all men powered at that point. So when industry 2.0 came, it was okay. How can we still speed up this process? It's not being efficient. There's too much demand, and we're not fast enough to support the demand. So in 1908, 08, I believe um, Henry T. Ford, the founder of Ford Company, uh, he came up with something called the production line. So in that, what happened was there's people who were very, very specialized uh, to their particular task. So say I know how to fix you know, set up in a line, and the car, the car essentially, as it moved through the line, was built. And so this significantly increased the speed of production and hence was known as the mass production assembly. So this is when industry 2.0 came, when he revolutionized the whole manufacturing process. Uh, electricity also started becoming available at that moment. A lot of people started uh, getting access to electricity, again, changing how um, products are made, what services are given to people. Then you have industry 3.0, so in that, uh, I believe it has something to add as well here. Yeah. So uh, in uh, Industry 3.0, uh, most of the companies, uh, they adopted like whatever their uh, analogs, like whatever their uh, like manual documents and all those things. Uh, they want uh, those to be uh, uh, safely secured and uh, like save into the digital format, right? Maybe in PDF or scan copies, maybe the printing material should get stored in the database. And so that's why they started like automating their internal internal processes uh, into uh, like um, uh, take an example of uh, like a colleges. So they started like school management software or hospital management software to secure the data and uh, like save that information into the uh, digital uh, digital format all the information save and secured into the uh, digital format. And then next step, uh, like the digitalization. So the digitalization means uh, that that is like uh, the next revolution has started from the digital, uh, uh, digital um, uh, making the digital information to the towards the digitalization. And now 
the industry 4.0 is a digital transformation where uh, all the processes or all the businesses the business models they are adopting the whole digitalized uh, di digitization and um, like now they are adopting the digitalization into their process and hence uh, you can take example of your uh, now the current situation in covid 19 all school and college and uh, universities going towards uh, e-learning e-learning uh, softwares right so here uh, this is like a changing the mindset in digital transformation what you do you apply this digitization into your day-to-day -day regular processes your regular business models and you change your business model towards uh, uh, like as a culture and you adapt from uh, like from low level management to higher level management from end user to uh, the business provider, the service provider. So everything uh, they adopt this digitalized um, digitalization process. That's the digital transformation happening right now. And uh, like when there was a goal when in industry 3.0, people were thinking, okay, who, that is my long long term goal that I will go uh, everything in digitalized. But this COVID-19 that brought us now like to new uh, like that is not a goal now it's now became a requirement for everyone and that's why i think um dy patil also started a moodle like a platform where they can start their uh, all the courses online in this pandemic situation right so the premise here is that you have industry 3.0 which just focused on you know we, we we came up with this new technology the computer that can you know um, do things digitally. We can now store. We don't need hard copies. We can have a software copy of yeah. this, right? And then that kind of that that part was where it was essentially a non-intelligent model. It's just uh, we started automating things, mm -hmm. but essentially there was no intelligence involved. Industry 4.0. Uh, now we have intelligent systems. We have physical uh, systems that are now combining with this whole virtual world, uh, and the virtual world has this whole new intelligence that we can now leverage which can then, you know, it's just pushing forward our productivity by like hundreds of times yeah. um, now. So in industry 4.0, you have these various technologies that are shaping the future of industry. So the key technologies here are big data, uh, autonomous ro ro robots. So in big data, you have um, essentially the biggest thing with big data now is that there's unlimited data. Uh, one thing uh, recently came out that data is, is the most valuable resource and it definitely is it's uh, more valuable than oil oil it is yeah. yes and the key thing with data is though that it's it's just it's never ending it's it will never go out of you will never finish it we will never be able to combust data um data raw data will always be accessible and there will be more and more every single day and so the biggest opportunity here is how can we use that data to better uh find trends, better find patterns, right? Uh, in our manufacturing process, let's say in our uh, in our processes and our services that, and how we interact with our customers. Every single point, a touch point with our customer is a, a source of data for us. And so that is something what all industries are using and they can leverage with the whole cloud computing that's coming out. You have autonomous robots. So these robots, which are now intelligent, they can do tasks that we used to do before, say in factory, we used to work on making some things, but now they can do even more intelligent things. We have uh, robots that are providing us uh, predictive analysis from this whole data set that, hey, this is what's going to happen. Now we're able to see what's going to happen in the future. We're able to foresee some things that are before they actually happen. Then you have Internet of Things. So you have this whole network of systems which which connect with each other. So there's no need for a human to human interaction there. It doesn't even have to have a human to a computer interaction. It's just computers talking to each other. And at one point they're able to uh, work together better than humans were able to do. And now we have this whole um, productivity aspect that comes into better, like it just revolutionized how fast we get things done. A cybersecurity, um, because big data is there, but this whole uh, volume is da data, which is very sensitive. There's we have a lot of information of each other online. So the first concern comes is cybersecurity. So whenever dealing with Industry 4.0, the biggest issue or questions we get is how is this going to be secured? How are we able to secure these processes that we're bringing in? 
uh, how can I ensure that by adopting these technologies, my data, my customers are protected, my processes are protected, and I'm protected. These are the few questions that we come across. And so as technologies move forward, you have this whole innovation in cybersecurity as well. Uh, we have blockchain that's also coming in the future, which sort of promises to um, mitigate the whole risk of hacking. Again, it's it's not in a practical application at the moment, but it's something that people are working on in the future. Then you have additive manufacturing. So the whole concept of 3D printing and you know how we can better model houses. So, so one example I'd also like to use is in, in California, they use um, 3D print printing for fairly widely. So a lot of companies are actually using this to design uh, modular homes. How can we distribute these homes to the need and the uh, needy and the poor. Hey, hey, no. Yeah. So essentially, uh, there are many companies around the world that are leveraging these technologies to better their processes, better design products and services so they can serve their customers better. And in the end, putting this all together, you have this whole system integration as a core focus of Industry 4.0. You have big data, autonomous robots, simulation, everything working together in a cohesive system to give you um, productive advantage. So in, in, in a simple term, it just creates a global value chain. So each touch point has some value to it. Uh, whether it's autonomous robots, you're getting some feedback, you're getting analysis, you're getting improved uh, production. So there's a value in the entire supply chain of your business. Uh, so when you when you look at these technologies and you put them on a Gardner hype cycle, so the, Gardner is one of the leading kind of uh, technology insights um, research, yeah. organization. It provides um, tremendous research on what technology is coming in, what's happening, and all that stuff. So every year they make something called the Gardner Hype Cycle. So some of the technologies, as we saw here, is uh, you can see them on this as well: autonomous systems, all those things. So what we do see now is that there's a lot of the technologies fall in the innovation trigger and the peak of inflated expectation. So usually. Um, Whenever a new technology comes out, it has this whole, you know, move towards it. Everyone's so hyped about it. Everyone's like, oh, my God, this new thing that's coming out. Okay. Artificial intelligence it goes up to a hype and then falls down. So the thing here is that a lot of the technologies are fairly early in the stage. And it's, it will take a, a few years until we still get the whole advantage on uh, how can this benefit businesses better. So we're fairly early in the process. But... With, with situations like the pandemic that's out here now, uh, priorities have been shifted. They've also um, kind of put a pressure on every single business to essentially, um, you know, use technologies even better. So, for example, us here, we're using Google Meet here to communicate. Now, many businesses are using uh, video conferencing tools. Uh, companies are adopting stuff like remote working, but it's also giving... Um, more preference to remote working tech, uh, technologies and products and services. So again, with priorities, there's um, a shifting. We've also have the growing uh, emergence of these technologies and how we can use these to better uh, innovate processes. Yeah, uh, uh, we we got one of the requests like, um, can we provide a bot like a virtual uh, teacher assistant bot? Yes. So he can reply or he can answer to the students, uh, like the school students, maybe a grade one, grade two, and it should like mimic the actions of uh, maybe the teacher when a teacher is offline. So that type of uh, technology is now um, um, demanded, demanded yeah. nowadays. Yeah. So yes, uh, again, to build on that uh, topic itself. So actually one of our clients had requested us to build a interactive bot um, to replace uh, the teacher because right now students are not able to go to class. Um, but the biggest problem now we are facing is uh, how do we get it to be as interactive as possible? Yeah. And so because there's a huge requirement uh, for students, say grade one's standards are one to say five, they need a lot of interaction. They need the teacher to be there uh, to guide them through the process because they're not used to the whole self-learning, self-paced um, environment. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge now is how do we create this bot that is very, very interactive? Um, it guides the students every any time they're stuck. And that's something that we're working on at the moment. Yeah. So to sum it up, Industry 4.0 is total di digitization. So uh, previously mentioned Industry 3.0, it just focuses on automation of a single machine and process. 
But in SG 4.0, it focuses on the end-to-end -end digitization. So you combine physical assets, you integrate them with digital, digital ecosystems, with value chain partners. So the goal is then we generate, analyze, and communicate data seamlessly, and this provides a new opportunity for businesses to come up with new products and new services. So uh, again, another chart that I always like to um, use. So over time, what we've seen now is because technology is getting, getting demo democratized, you have the product production rate and volume is high, like at a new peak. Every single day, we're getting more access to more access to technology. So for example, our company is leveraging um, AWS for a lot of our services. We use a lot of their um, machine learning services to provide um, solutions for clients. So we have access to this whole new compute power that's enabling us to make solutions that we would have not been able to do five, 10 years ago. And so again, something to remember always is as we move further and further, technology is coming to your fingertips and your phone has more power than anything we've had ever before. Yeah. But, but a lot of people question, ask questions like, what does industry 4.0 look like? So essentially it's when robotics, 3D printing, data analytics, and internet of things and digital fabrication are joined together. I mentioned this before as well, but something you always need to remember. And so it's, it's, it's on three things, the web of technologies. So the first one is, the first step on adopting Industry 4.0 is the full digitization of a company's operations. So it, it would be auto, uh, automation technologies, it will be combining all parts of supply chain. So how can we ensure that each part in the supply chain adds some value to the entire supply chain? So um, I'll give an example. So until uh, technology was adopted, so say 10, 20, maybe 30 years back, um, in a production process, when uh, when companies used to build new products, they they were very linear. It's almost like, okay, I'm gonna this team is going to work on one one part of this project, one feature. They're going to release it, and then six months down the road, we're going to actually release it to the public, and then we're gonna test it right before we release it to public. And then those six months pass. Everything seems to be working in a developer environment, for example. And then they come to a point when they're about to release it to customers, and then all of a sudden it's not working, right? And so they find that there's some defect in that system, in that product they've made. And so the six months worth of effort has basically gone to waste mm -hmm. and they need to restart again. So the fault in that was the systems were not self-feeding. They were not made to communicate with each other. They were not, they were very, um, they are operating in silos almost. So you know, we always know that if a company has members operating in silos, it's, it's not gonna work long time you're not going to have a competitive advantage. And so when you bring that concept to just your software, your technologies, so communicating with each other. Now we have things like, oh, the distribution, so you have logistics software that's always updating things like where has the product gone? Where where did we get it from? Has it been deliver, delivered? And has the customer paid? So all these things are now so connected and through one database, for example, that everything's communicating, everything is transparent. The second is um, we focus on the redesign of products and services. So um, again, from our previous uh, session by uh, Mr. Phil Bell, he also focused on how uh, we should ensure uh, sustainability. How can we uh, combat climate change? We have all these pressing issues, climate change. We have drug resistant bacteria, all these things coming up. Um, we also have the whole carbon footprint uh, topic that's coming up amongst all the companies uh, across various industries. So the goal of a lot of the companies nowadays is how do we design products that are that are minimally impacting the environment and that they provide more value to the people. So the whole carbon neutral uh, movement is what's be the core focus of a lot of the companies. So how can we ensure that the products are environmentally, economically, and socially sustainable? These are the three pillars that a lot of uh, companies are adopting, and this is the core focus of Industry 4.0. And the last one is closer interaction with the customers. So in this is we take the business and we take all our operations to the customer. So like what we do always, we always believe on the whole customer uh, oriented, customer centric mm -hmm. approach. So we go directly with the customer. We get involved as their extension of their team and we work with them to solve their problems. And so in this, um, 
if any company, the, the goal is to design a sustainable um, customer experience. Um, you, you may have heard of terms like user experience or UX. So the customer experience goes a step beyond. It's ensuring that your customer feels uh, in, welcomed, it feels um, connected with the business from the point the lead is generated to the point the sale is made, made and beyond the sale. So uh, even companies in, uh, in North America, so uh, you have Walmart, so which is basically a super, uh, superstore chain in, in Canada and US. So Walmart essentially what they're doing here is um, when users come in, they're trying to add stuff like um, self checkouts and all those things, right? So they're trying to ensure how can they save costs? How can they be economically sustainable? But they can also ensure that customers uh, get through the process quickly. Um, it's minimally invasive and all that thing. So closer interaction, designing, um, you know, stores to best suit the customer. So a company here at Best Buy who was nearly going bankrupt, they essentially changed the entire layout of their store to make it uh, very, very aesthetic, very elegant. And so that, that small change completely revolutionized how they progress in the next five, 10 years. And so the, the misconception with customer experience UX is that it only has to look good. That's a misconception. It has to a look good, but it also has to feel good when the customer is actually interacting with your business, your product or service. So three things that are for the focus of Industry 4.0. So in, in, in my, you know, sort of like a statement to you guys is that Industry 4.0, the power is with the user. So a, a product of a company is only deemed usable from the lens of, a, of, the, of the consumer. And for a business, this is very, very important to know that your product, your value is determined by the user in, in this context of a digital world. And to sum it up, it would always come with data, automation, intelligence systems, all combined together to form something we call Industry 4.0. So a lot of the questions uh, we also get is, how has work changed due to Industry 4.0? So we have the whole concept of fluid gigs. Essentially what fluid gigs means is that um, so, so before like these technologies came out, say 10 years before, 20 years before you had, uh, you had very structured, um, hierarchies, you had very structured, um, teams in, in businesses, in companies. And now what's happening is a lot of the, a lot of the roles are mixing. A lot of the people in various teams are working very, very close together. So you'd, you'd have people in development working very, very closely with productions, very, working very, very closely with marketing. It's almost that. Someone from marketing is also sometimes involved with production related topics versus development also involved with production. So in technologies like DevOps, yeah. the role of a developer and production yeah. in engineers are just combined with something called DevOps. Yeah, and, and uh, all these uh, different, different department and uh, like uh, now the process like agile scale, scale agile, which brings all the departments and uh, the Agile, agile culture throughout the uh, industry, right? So that's what like the agile digital transformation is happening in industry 4.0. Yeah. Again, so uh, lifelong learning. The, the main thing now is that there's always, there should always be a motivation to work A. And thing is that everyone always needs to keep learning. Um, and when, whenever you're dealing with these future trends and technologies, one thing we all have to learn is that it's, it's, it's lifelong, A, learning is lifelong, and that is the key, key uh, thing that's being pushed forward now. So an example here of how jobs have evolved. So until, you know, recently there used to be a quality, you know, quality control engineer, then you have someone who's QA, then you move on to something automation tester, and then you have a DevOps tester now. Yeah. So who is involved in the development and operations of your product? Uh, say, for example, before there used to be someone who was a BA, so business analyst, then you moved on to a business systems analyst. Now you move to a, something called a product manager. So a product manager works as something like a mini CEO yeah. of a company. So companies in, in, say, the US, Canada have a growing adoption of something called a product manager. Uh, in, in a, I'll give you an example of Google, for example. Google, Google operates in, in a very open uh, environment. So essentially they have uh, various departments, but they have each department run as a separate company. 
So you have a variety of uh, people like product managers working and operating their own products and thinking it as their own company. So the whole ownership aspect comes there. And so the, the key thing I want to uh, kind of bring forward here is in industry 4.0, it's not just adoption of technology. It's also uh, adopting a new culture. Yes. So a new culture of collaboration, a new culture of innovation. And the mindset. Yes. And, and the, the mindset. agile mindset, total. So hyper automation, uh, building on what we've discussed now, um, I, we have something we deal, deal with always in RPA. So I'll just give you guys a brief overview of uh, how RPA would work because RPA is sort of like the central um, part of this whole industry 4.0. So hyper automation is, is basically using technology to complete tasks that were once acquired by humans. So. Uh, we've seen that the production uh, assembly line started with humans being specialized for that one task. Then they were replaced with robots being specialized in that one task. And now you have robots doing multiple tasks, being intelligent at that point, right? They're, they're, they can work on a variety of tasks. They can provide data and predictive analysis on that. So more intelligent systems came in. So hyper automation basically, you know, often results in the creation of a digital twin of your organization. So uh, as previously mentioned, uh, the company Brains Up, we work in various industries, so healthcare, manufacturing, e-commerce, and the government. And we work across uh, product engineering, data analytics, RPA, IoT, all of these. So you may question, what is RPA? So RPA is essentially robotics process automation. Um, again, think of this as a robot, but on your computer. Um, essentially using software to capture and interpret applications. And this is something that is widely being adopted across industries. So in Canada, banking industries are taking this, uh, especially with COVID-19, yeah. um, when companies are dealing with forms processing. Yeah. So I'll talk about use case next. Um, so the seven robotic skills, um, here basically the focus is to gather, collect, um, validate the information, then you actually process the information, right? And then you put this in records. All of these processes, which were initially done by humans, were now done by ro robots. So you can you can serve what those millions of requests that are coming every single day, uh, especially now. There's there's a huge burden on say the finance industry and the government to process um, claims, process grants. Uh, so in Canada, they're offering the CREB, so the emergency funds, to a lot of the people who are being unemployed. So with that, they have millions of millions of requests every single day. And the strain is on the system on how can we best, uh, so, and within within a short time frame, we have a week to give to them, how can we serve the customers as soon as possible? So the government here is adopting RPA to do that as well. Yeah. So automation can affect more than half the jobs in the next decade. So what we tell a lot of companies is now it's the time to adopt RPA. So why RPA? So the three pillars of RPA is that it helps improve the speed of validation. Uh, it improves and boosts company analytics, and in the end helps tremend tremendously reduce the cost of insourcing. The three main things with RPA. So if you're trying to um, you know, pr provide services to thousands of people, millions of people, and you don't have the time to hire that many resources, Especially now, there's no time to hire and wait. Uh, can't wait until the pandemic has passed. And so RPA can essentially help empower those things. So I mentioned before, forms processing comes in here as well. So one of the main use cases with this is all the manually and handwritten forms can then just be uh, uh, you know, analyzed by the robot and the f information can be filled into the database very, very quickly. So you can, the, the speed of processing is almost um, like double, maybe like even 10 times the, yeah, 10 the speed times. they used yeah. to ever have. Yeah. And so the business impact has been that the form digitization time has reduced to one minute per document, which is almost nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So productivity, reduced cost, all of these things come together into this whole new technology that uh, we are also proposing. So this is actually what we've uh, proposed to some of our clients, and we've actually implemented some of these in their um, organization as well. So I just wanted to give you guys a brief um, use case on RPA. That's hyper automation. Yeah, yeah. but that's exa ex exactly what hyper automation is. So artificial intelligence also is an extension of um, 
robotics, this whole process automation. It works very, very well with RPA. Um, so when you combine repetitive tasks and automation with this whole intelligent aspect, you now have another um, power in your hands. And you may not even realize it, but AI is essentially everywhere around you. Um, your, your Facebook essentially knows and it, it caters content to you based on your likes, based on what you've previously shared. And all these things are just powered by AI. And the magnitude of AI is extreme. It, when you put this in various use industries, you have this whole new power at your hands as well. So artificial intelligence in simple terms is just the intelligent predictive use of data. And, and, and is expected to become 15 trillion market by 2030. And it just shows that the growth potential for AI is tremendous. Some of the companies, so, uh, this matrix might look very, very uh, crowded. It's hard to navigate, but this just showed that just in Canada, these are all the AI companies that have been founded in the last one or two years. And so if you look at, um, and if you look at, let's say Toronto, all of these are just in Toronto itself. And then this is Montreal. So just by looking at these, you have these new companies that are emerging as uh, AI you know, hotspots. They're bringing new solutions. Um, to the market. And then when you bring AI and all this whole industry 4.0, we now combine how AI works with these sectors. So AI in healthcare, I mentioned before how AI is being used to find drugs that can help us better um, serve society, create vaccines, create treatments. So that's a whole new revolution that's being pushed forward. Uh, a company um, that I've actually um, you know, met across at a, at a conference, they were working on using AI to just uh, find a protein, protein uh, it's called protein cure. Uh, essentially what they were working on is using AI to design proteins that can essentially be encapsulated in a capsule and easily distributed to people. So what molecular structure of a, uh, of a protein is the best optimized uh, for a healthier body? So something that, that they're working on and they're using AI to run through these variety of um, healthcare records on what molecular structure is the best. Just shows how AI is revolutionizing healthcare. When you move to finance, you have these um, smart stock trading that's coming up now as well. So whenever you invest in shares, you have AI providing smart insights on where should I you know, invest. invest. And this is great for companies as well, right? It shows from an investor standpoint, it also shows how which company is, has the best potential for growth, all of these things. Uh, it, it's also a significant player in markets and finances and mortgages and all those things that the government and the uh, banking industry deals with. Automobile, we already know self-driving cars that are coming up. So, the, so with AI and automobile now is that you have AI logistics that's being completely revolutionized. So I mentioned before supply chain. So now, what the if you've seen Tesla semi, uh, Tesla Semi, the new autonomous truck, it essentially provides live um, updates on where it's traveling and where it's gone. So now you don't even need a person, you don't need a truck driver to take your supply from place to place. You have track of where the truck went at each given moment. So traceability is there. You're able to backtrack where an item came from, and so in the context of say a grocery store or a supermarket where you're dealing with food, you, if there's a bacteria outbreak, for example, you can trace back its origins and be like, okay, this is where it came from. Recall items from that area. Mm -hmm. So expenses are saved, time is saved, and people are saved. Yeah. You have law that is revolutionized by AI, mm -hmm. so smart judges. Yeah. Uh, reduces bias. Again, that's a big issue yeah. in many countries. AI and education, big, big uh, opportunity at the moment yeah. um, is definitely there. How can we create interactive experiences for students? Yes. So to kind of sum up uh, today's topic, what Industry 4.0 does is it's now the time for businesses to reinvent the product, the process, and business models. So when you call about reinventing product, you, it means that you're designing beyond features. You're designing experiences. You're designing the fundamental, like just just the look and feel of a product is another thing, but how the user feels when they're using the product is the important consideration nowadays. So that's a key focus. When you talk about process, then you talk about um, how do I reduce waste? 
uh, how do I implement lean models and all of these things to a achieve efficiency, save costs, and reduce time to market? Because nowadays you have so much dependence of people. You're you're every everyone around you is dependent on each other. So each one needs to, each person needs to contribute. Each person needs to or each business needs to take that initiative and ensure that they're ensuring quality and they're ensuring that my services are there when the other person needs it. And because the pace at innovation is so fast, process innovation and because of Industry 4.0, process has been completely revolutionized. And then you have something called the business model. So we're moving from what used to be before hardware um, or into this. So the IBM, they completely pivoted from hardware. They moved into something else, software oriented, cloud businesses. Mm. So business models are shifting. Uh, there's a whole lot of demand on software as a service. So if you've seen in the past um, few years, you have companies that are working on you know, Salesforce, all these companies that came up, um, DevOps companies, so Ansible, all these things, Terraform, all these companies are software as a service companies. And they're, that's the next kind of trend that's coming up. How enterprise, how can you develop enterprise products that can enable other businesses to provide better services? So that's the kind of move towards it. Uh, Again, going back to creating a digital twin essentially means that your organization should be able to operate offline as well. Uh, and we're seeing that with COVID-19. We have banks that are offering uh, operating perfectly online. Um, Capital One in, in the U.S. and Canada, they have said that they will probably continue operating offline um, remotely uh, for the next few years at least or going forward. And also the trend is moving like from CapEx to OpEx, right? Yes. So uh, the previous, the ancient, uh, uh, the approach was CapEx, like uh, to purchase some asset, invest into asset, maybe in uh, huge, huge uh, me mechanical uh, engines and all those things, or maybe uh, invest into some asset and then uh, you will, the companies are getting uh, like a benefit after certain after certain years or maybe after certain uh, months. But now, uh, like if you see all these like a software as a service or maybe infrastructure as a service, those models are providing OPEX. Those models are developed on the OPEX um, means initially it is uh, reducing the operational cost and like companies are gaining more and more uh, benefits. Uh, using these OPEX models. And same thing now it is coming into industry when uh, like a uh, education industry where uh, the subscription base e-learning process is also coming up. So the students, the colleges also uh, do not need to invest into a big, uh, a big uh, databases or maybe a big assets or big servers. So they can subscribe per student per user base. Maybe a dollar or maybe a ten dollar uh, per per uh, students initially on quarterly basis they can pay or maybe a monthly basis or maybe a yearly basis. So that's why the opex um, uh, that concept is also uh, now is a focus on uh, industry 4.0. Yeah, and so to kind of sum it up. We're now moving from something like a linear process to an yeah. agile digital engineering, yeah. um, something we, we are the, uh, always involved in with our clients. And now it's creating self-sustained ecosystems. So you're, you're getting, you have multiple touch points, you're getting feedback continuously, you're ensuring continuous improvement and uh, efficiency. That's yeah. the core focus of Industry 4.0. And that brings us to the end of our session today. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's open it up to Q&A. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free yeah. to ask us. Yes, uh, thank you, Dilip sir and Abhinit for excellent presentation and for highlighting the reinvention needs of digitization, sustainable design, <clears throat> and closer interaction with the customers for Industry 4.0, which is integrated with Education 4.0 and evolution mm -hmm. of jobs through hyper automation and RPA. Thank you very much. It was indeed a pleasure to hear your uh, presentation. I think, Abhinit, our students will definitely get uh, motivated as at midnight, 12.30 or one, so. You are so energetic to present the contents. Thank yeah. you very much.
yeah that's what like our i elevate program is fully focused on the skill base and fully focused on industry 4.0 which we want to start with your organization at dy patil that that's our first choice to start in your uh, Yeah. Yes, sir. So, can we, uh, uh, principal? So, can we move yeah. to question answer session? Yes, yes, please. Yes. If yes. there are questions, please take the questions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, we have a question uh, from Pramod Ubare. The technology is replacing labors in the industry. How we can deal with the replacement of manpower with developed automation technology, and uh, how we can develop a technology more positive to avoid cyber crimes? That was the question. right so um from what i'm getting the question is that he's saying the this kind of fear that all of us have is okay uh if this automation is not going to be enough jobs for um, all of us right so what what's happening now is the focus is now there's there's need for creativity we don't need well, we don't need people to do monotonous tasks we don't need people to do manual things that can be done by the computer so the core focus is now we have these problems um problems that we can see 10 20 years from now and how can we work now to solve those problems how can we build better things than we already have and so if you see a lot of the trends in organizations many people are working on uh, creative things many people are build, working on things that oh that enable them to build new things right and yeah. sort of building on to the whole cyber crime aspect as well Uh, as technologies progress uh, new security uh, new security um, innovation is also happening so you have companies like splunk and all these offering very very robust secure system for organizations uh, from these attacks so when the emergence of cybersecurity companies specific to that uh there's some ones that are definitely seems seems based tools uh that are enabling organizations to create very sophisticated and protected environments yeah so, uh, i would like to intervene uh, here uh, because uh, uh, his question is very apt questions as far as this uh, prevention of the cyber attacks and uh, mm-hmm. the creation of this huge amount of the crime in cyber in india it's very very heavy so in yeah. that case what is that systematic automated efforts ai enabled software which we which can take care of such kind of the crime so that is the question right so like i said um, a company called splunk right they are essentially focused all around offering uh, company companies with these systems that they can implement on top of their existing infrastructure so these are all ai enabled companies um, so they are tracking the logs where like what type of the patterns they are uh, they are looking into the patterns what type of intruders are doing uh, in what way they are entering, entering into yeah. they are trying to uh, enter into the uh, network at what level they are they are uh, entering trying so to where the breach is the, essential yeah, right so they are they are identifying the patterns and they are implementing the ai based solution on top uh, which that. will avoid Uh, or maybe uh, giving the alerts okay uh, this type of uh, like intruders are uh, na- trying to enter into your uh, your so, en- yeah. environment and uh, so uh, like uh, this uh, as have been it told question. so i think there was one other question uh, by mr rahul in the chat in hmm. systems uh, like prior to prior to uh, any attacks yeah. avoid that uh, big damages you yeah. yes correct but only 17% of the total crime is being detected only with respect to the automated systems here 87% of the crime which has been made in india is still undetected so that is a big question right. so, with the working with the right. indian government right so what the issue now is that technologies have to be uh, adopted right as well so what's happening now is there's companies that are working on these solutions you have splunk you have uh, aws that's offer their own systems right now the problem is you don't have many businesses that are adopting these technologies a it's also because many uh, companies don't uh, they're not aware of it right because i also mentioned that's very early in the stage so say in in the Amer- in, in the united states and canada the presence of splunk and presence of all these advanced tools is very high many many companies have to even by law have to adapt these cyber security oh. tools oh. as well so okay. oh, what makes you suggest the government yeah 
no no next question no problem that's it. this is a <laughs> lot of discussions can be done because yeah. uh, india need this kind of the solutions that i would yes. this is one is uh, moving towards the next question and the next question is from professor nitin mane uh, it's a industry 4.0 is a digitization uh, so what is the space for core branches that is the question for uh, one can you repeat the question sir yeah uh, industry 4.0 is uh moving towards digitization so what is the space of core branches that is the question okay so he's he's uh, essentially uh, asking if, well, if so what what the importance of physical branches is that what he's trying to say um so core, core branches yes. civil engineering mechanical engineering all, such all kind branches. of branches yes, okay, okay. Uh, all branches okay ha huh. right so with with core branches so i'll give you an example here as well so with uh, the growing trend is that the you're, you're combining virtual and physical systems right so you, you still need a place to live you also need this physical aspect to it right they are not humans are not virtual so essentially in in canada itself there is a company called um, skywalk uh, skywalk labs essentially they're working on uh, building an entire area which is fully um intelligent and autonomous so your house essentially works with they're designed to be sustainable so they have like vertical farming they have all these things uh they're designing this in downtown toronto and what they're doing this is now they're combining vertical farming they're combining the whole um area they're redesigning the architecture to be uh, automated to be very very susceptible um, you know ai and automated so you will have robots working around as security guards in that area so for a civil engineer for example in that case it is involved in designing these architectures that are yeah. open for yeah like they are they're designed for sustainable future they they can support vertical farming for example and all these growing trends so you will always have civil engineers mechanical engineers all these engineers except their focus will now be how can we adopt these future technologies in our existing processes it's correct uh would like to add into this nitin 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 mane his answer is very good Te core technological branches are going to be there for as far as this domain knowledge is concerned and the mm -hmm. smartness and intelligence system can be built in to get the right insight and okay. uh, yeah. uh, for questing and management yeah. yes okay, next, uh, ne next sir uh, yes moving towards the last question perhaps mm. uh, we have a uh, dr uttam jadhav from sanjay ghodawat university kolhapur Mm -hmm. and he, uh, he has the question what is the role of humanities in industry 4.0 right so in humanities is the, the focus is around uh, human interaction it's also on how we uh, deal with each other for example right so with industry 4.0 we are leveraging automation we're leveraging all these technologies to ensure that we serve society better we serve everyone better right the core focus is how do we use these technologies to ensure that the customer in the end feels better uh and because we're in a constant you know race to always make our lives better it's it's human nature we're always moving towards making our lives better making others lives better and so the only way industry 4.0 operates is that everyone is working together on this new situation adopting these technologies and you know pull, putting this together in this whole you know collaborative environment is the main focus as well so you're you're getting feedback from customer directly at every single touch point of your production process yeah yes uh, so yeah. can we take one more sir because the question yeah, is yeah, uh, very nice please. yeah sure sure, sure. yeah uh, so the question is from medha argade uh, what are your insights about utilizing technology without disrupting the demographic dividend especially for densely populated young countries like india right so uh, what the question is again saying is how can we ensure that we have this whole young population that can actually do a lot of lot more work they can actually handle the manual aspect so uh, like the previous session also said that the the focus should be on skill development the focus should be how can we um, use these technologies to innovate for the future uh, our current education system doesn't essentially train them for the future so by the time someone finishes the degree there they have this knowledge that oh that's already absolute um even in many of some engineering degree there's very little um, mention of technology like you know future uh, 
blockchain and all of these quantum computing, all these emerging technologies that are going to be coming in 10, 15 years. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get from here is that how can we build solutions uh, and make people more proactive? How can we get people to work on real problems as they learn? So more proactive approach. So more practical approach. Yeah. Change the mindset uh, towards more on uh, towards research, more towards uh, gaining the skills rather than just uh, knowledge, right? So both, both the things are required, uh, like uh, the proactiveness, the mindset, the change in the culture, adoption of the technology. Yeah. So, uh, for example, one of our initial elevate the focus is actually that we are um, our students here, especially in our island program, they they said essentially put it to real world. So throughout the year, they they work with companies, they work directly with uh, research institutions, and they're given uh, various problems, they're given these technologies, they're given access to uh, resources, mentors, and the students are empowered to actually find a problem and work towards it. So and, and from that, we've, we've seen a lot of our students actually go and work at many, many top companies. They have better employability than many, many universities across the world. And it's because they're focused on practical skills yeah. and pro solving real problems. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for excellent session. Uh, we are honored to have you as a speaker. And I take this opportunity to thank you uh, because I'm from ENTC department and we have a center of excellence uh, along with you. So yep. we are very much thankful for that also. Thank you for excellent session. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, Divai Patel, for having us here today. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Over to you, Vadhai, sir. Yeah. Yeah. See, you're, drawn, you're not audible. Hello? Okay. Uh, now I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible also. Yes, sir. Audible and visible. Okay. Uh, Abhinit and uh, Dilip Patel, sir, your presentation was excellent. Yeah. Uh, very thorough, very studied presentation covering the entire scope of Industry 4.0, various yeah. 10, 15 important technologies considered as a multidisciplinary approach of the cyber security, AR, VR, ML, mixed reality, AI, data science, cyber physical systems, automation, industrial automation, intelligence system, entire you have covered and the relevance to the existing branches which you have elaborated wonderfully. Would like yeah. to, you know, the uh, respond to the questions given by the Mr. Sanjay Godavath actually, uh, the personality from Sanjay Godavath said, with respect to the humanity, Again, when yeah. you would like to the human behavior, it's a question of the physical, physiological, psychological, and cognitive kind of the behavior of the human being, how it is being tackled. It comes into humanity as a biological, social, cultural of the human aspect lives. And if you look at the, all this technology are now gearing up to give the solutions to the predictive kind of the solutions, uh, specifically by the AI and data science uh, technology, because huge, humongous amount of the data is generated in a COVID-19 situation and so all these human related questions are being addressed and hence many challenges have posed by the government to the all the young students to address this kind of the issues. And I am yeah. sure that because of this industry 4.0, aligning this education 4.0, I think this is the app. I would like to congratulate you, both of you. Wonderful question, uh, presentation. Excellent. I'm very happy that we are welcome to get associated with Divai Patel College of Engineering. Thanks for Thank actually supporting for the IoT lab. Now let us integrate for this other AI and data science kind of the field. Because as, sure. as you have mentioned that RPA, we are very strong. We have a uh, uh, good laboratory with us, good manpower, which are trained. We have developed the products also as per the IBRP. You can use our services also for your company. Let us integrate. Uh, yeah. Thank yes, you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.